to, to get it going? Yeah, it's, look, it's all part of the build-up. This is all the excitement and um, it's what we've worked so hard to, to get to. The players have been fantastic. They've been calm. I've been calm and uh, we're looking forward to it. Is there any part of you that is, you know, you could catch a cold, couldn't you? Other, other teams in higher divisions have done that this season. No, nope. I've got full belief in my players. Um, we've come up against some very, very good teams in the past and done very well. Uh, very well. It's going to be tough. Um, nobody is expecting it not to be. They're going to come with a strong team, I know that, because Pep Guardiola is a serial winner. He wants to win everything and he's also very respectful. So I can't speak highly enough of him, but these these two sat next to me, the players, they, uh, they're an outstanding group and they have made me a very, very proud man. Take us back to your coaching course when you have to do a, a sort of examination of Pep Guardiola's sort of coaching technique, didn't you, uh, doing your badges. And was it with Mikel Arteta and Thierry Henry on the, in your little group? <laughs> they were in they were in the group, I can't remember. Um, as part of it, we, we all had to study, study a different manager, um, a world-class manager. I actually had uh, Diego Simeone, I was, I was doing him. One of the others had Pep Guardiola. Um, and I have asked for it, but uh, <laughs> to no avail. Look, he's, he's, he's bordering on a, a genius because the way he goes to different countries changes you know, their, their way of thinking, makes them believe in his philosophy. That's not easy. That's, you know, and everybody say, well, he, he's going to the big teams. He went to Bayern Munich when they just won absolutely everything. And he changed the whole, the whole philosophy of, of what they were working to. To, to go in in sync with what he believed in and you know we're talking about seasoned world class players who like Philip Lamb etc who bought into that and they produced some of the, the best football that Bayern Munich had played as well so it's um, everybody says you, you know he's, he's at the top level can he do it in League 2 I bet he could do it in League 2 uh, no doubt about that whatsoever he's, he's just the way the way he is and the way he believes and comes across is is something that any any aspiring coach manager uh, needs to pay attention to, without losing their own identity. And so people talk about the pitch being this, being that. You don't think that'll? I mean, they got sixteen point five pitches, haven't they, at their training ground? I don't know what the point five is about, but they have. Um, they won't have a pitch like yours, will they? No. Um, but we've played some fantastic football on this pitch. Yeah, I think the pitch is getting a little bit mentioned too much. Uh, it's because it ain't up to the, the Premier League standards, the top championship standards, um, what they have week in, week out. We're able to play some really good football on there. We did that Tuesday night as well. Um, so I have no doubt whatsoever. I'll tell you this now, he will not change his way of playing, his philosophy. Um, and they will play football on that pitch, whether they've got a well, they won't have to do a kick or a scream, and they all know their roles and responsibilities. It's it's going to be it's going to be a tough, tough game because no matter what eleven they play, they can play the third eleven, and it'll still beat a lot of Premier League teams. Can there be a show? Yeah, of course it can. I wouldn't be sat here otherwise. I'd just say no, no. We'll uh, just give them give them the game. We're all turn up, shake hands, and and walk off. Who said that we were going to draw with Tottenham? Who said we were going to beat Leicester? Uh, Middlesbrough away, Leeds at home. These players have a knack of ri uh, rising to the occasion. And they, uh, they're a fantastic group. Um, so let's not blame the pitch. Let's not you know, look for excuses. We're out there. We've got to play on there as well. Will it suit us more than them? Yes. But good. I'm glad it will, because that gives us more of a chance than what we would have had if we had to go to the Etihad. Joe, is it slightly daunting as a goalkeeper, with possibly Aguero, Jesus, Sane, Sterling coming at you? Um, I wouldn't say it's daunting. It's um, it's exciting more than anything. Um, as you know, as League Two player, there's 
it's not a, an occasion that comes around uh, very often. Um, and as a professional footballer, you want to challenge yourself against the very best and, and test yourself against those sort of players. And this is a, this is a chance to do that. So it's, it's yeah, it's very exciting. You've got the most famous twins in the world. Um, are they going to yeah. be there? Yeah, Lizzie's coming along with the twins. So um, yeah, they'll come along. Little boy Harrison as well, and a few family members. So yeah, that, they'll be the first game, and what a game for their. They're going to struggle a bit there. There's only one ticket left, so <laughs> one of the two they're going to swap at half time. <laughs> it has been just. I think mean, you're one of the. St- you and your your wife have provided one of the stories of the FA Cup. I've said it before. Actually, Newport has done a lot for the FA Cup this year, hasn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's sort of got a lot more media attention than I thought it would, but um, it, you know, it's fantastic. It's um, you know, for me personally, it was. Uh, um, an incredible night and uh, yeah it was it's nice to share it with everyone it's great and Robbie um, you saved a great goal for the last round um, hit the woodwork four times on you on Tuesday night um, maybe saving a goal <coughs> um, yeah I think Tuesday we just uh, you know we were just unfortunate not to put the chances away um, we looked at the stats and the stats were massively in our favour on Tuesday um, but yeah, if we, um, I think we know that we're not going to get many chances on Saturday. But the ones we get, we, are, we have got to put away. And what is it about the FA Cup this season? What do you think is... So you started in November, I mean, still yeah, going. I feels like we've been here forever. Um, I don't know, so I think it's just the, the, the side that the gaffers put together as a collective unit. You know, I think we're a real together squad. Um, we've got a never-die-say attitude as we showed at Middlesbrough. So. We don't know when we're beaten, and Saturday we've got nothing to fear. Everyone's full of confidence, and we'll go out there and have a real go. Last one for me, Mike. Any injury news at all, or anybody available who wasn't? Or? Harry McCurdy's available. He can come in, um, and Andrew Cross is out. That's it at the moment. Um, Mike O'Brien was on the bench. He's fine, um, and Josh Labadee is fine. So. I'm saying that now we've still got a training session to go and I don't really like doing it before but yeah as it stands everybody apart from Andrew Cross are fine so Harry Harry's definitely registered and he can play yeah he's definitely registered yeah he is Um, you know we uh, he might be involved he might not it it depends how I feel today you know whether he's ready or not but he um, gives us another option a big debut if he does feature doesn't he he's not it's, it's not a bad one, is it? Um, funny enough, he's a big Chelsea fan, and I think he went to the game on on Sunday. So I think he, he's definitely got a score to settle. A bit of revenge, then, yeah. yeah, something like that. Um, and he gives you another option off the bench. You probably haven't had many many attacking options in the, in the last few games off the bench. No, and obviously losing Antoine uh, was a big blow for us because he's fantastic. He fitted in excellently how we how we play, how we want to play. And he gives us he gives us a lot of different options. So, you know, we've had to adapt. We've had to change things slightly, and you know, it's it's worked well so far. A lot of people won't have seen much of Harry. I mean, what sort of player is he? What, what can he what can he give you? He's a pest. Honestly, he's a pest. He doesn't stop on on the pitch or off the pitch. You know, he played against us for crew a couple of years back, and he didn't stop running. He was winding the crowd up. He's um, it's just a bundle of energy. He's just, he's, he is what he is. He's, uh, he looks, looks about twelve. Uh, I nearly walked past him a couple of times uh, at the game because he looks so young. But he, uh, he's got a fantastic attitude, and you know, he's one that will do a lot of work for the football to, uh, for the team. Probably not going to have much possession uh, tomorrow. How are you going to deal with that? Is that going to be going to be difficult? I've seen Premier League teams not have much possession against them, so that's not. It's not a concern. My concern is what we do when we get the ball, um, and we've got to make sure we use it right. We we won't just be sitting back, uh, no chance. I'd rather I'd rather get thumped um, doing it properly than you know losing one nil with no ambition. Uh, we wanna I want to give the supporters something to cheer about, and these players have got to believe, which I know they do, that we can cause an upset. If I don't believe that, then I might expect these these players to believe that. So the possession doesn't bother me. 
Does it almost feel like this is this is your cup final? Does it? Yeah. Have that feeling. It? Yeah. Um, like I said, I've said it before. If we if we do win. If we win this, whether it's extra time, penalties, I don't care how we do it. If we do win, it'll be the biggest shock in the FA Cup history. And I say that with the biggest respect to, you know, the other big, big giant killing. Um, and I've said my reasons my reasons for that are because of the, the sheer gulf in finances, um, the quality of the players that Man City have got, the quality and the level they're playing at. And obviously, they've got the best manager in the world right now who's in charge of them so for those reasons it will be the biggest shock the FA Cup has ever seen Got anything special planned for, for Pep before or after the game? Uh, we treat everybody with, uh, with respect every opposition manager they'll all tell you it you speak to any League 2 club any you know, non-league club pre-season clubs who, who've come here we treat them all with, with respect and I think that's very important um, Look for me, it'll be a special, a special occasion. I, you know, hopefully getting a one-on-one -on -one with Pep and and locking arms against him. But look, it's about the players. It's about the players and the fans enjoying this and going out there and showing how far the football uh, club has come since since I've been in charge. So an article in Manchester Evening News did this week about fears that you you're just going to kick Man City off the pitch. And yeah, I just think that's lazy journalism. So I'm not. I think that's disgusting, actually. But don't worry about it. I mean, you haven't had bookings in the last two two games. Well, obviously, like I said, it's lazy journalism. They haven't done any research. They've just plucked out um, comments that was made after one game. Um, I'm not going to mention names, but look, it's um, I just think it's very very lazy journalism. Flynn, are you clearly, it's not the first time you guys have performed against big teams this season. I know we spoke about it before, but. What is it about what you can do against Premier League sides, Championship sides, contrasting to in the league? And what is it that you see seems to suit you? Is the point that the better the side, the more it seems to bring out of you as a group? Well, the first thing I've got, I'm going to say is that I think it's a little bit disrespectful to the players that they only turn it on in the FA Cup games or the Cup games against the big teams because this bunch of players give the football club the best start that he's ever had at the start of the season. And that's another massive milestone, another massive tick for these players. We've got a small squad, we've had a lot of injuries, so our form's dipped. We've had a lot of important games in the FA Cup, which means so much for for the finances of the football club, the reputation of the football club. And these players don't know when they're beaten. They raise their levels. They're all talented footballers. It's, I've said before, it's a, the reason why a lot of them are not playing higher is because of consistency. These players on any given day can play at a higher level. Um, and if they get more consistent, a lot of these players will be, be looked at or teams will be after them. And um, that's a credit to them. More, more than that, it's not it's getting yourselves up for big games. But against the Premier League sides, it's not like you've scraped through these. The point is that you, you, you beat the sides fair and square. I mean, you know, Burrow, had it been 4-0, no one would have complained. There seems to be something in the way that you, that you guys play against bigger, bigger in the vertical sides that, that seems to seems to work. If you, if, can you put your finger on that, that kind of magic formula? I wish I could, because I wouldn't be sat here, would I? Managing Newport <laughs> County. Um, I, I'd probably be next to Pep or something. Um, no, he, he, listen, I think the crowd, the sellout, the whole occasion, the atmosphere um, has a big effect. I think the players really respond to it. They really react to it. Um, like I said, they're all talented footballers. Um, we've had a lot of injuries in the league. We, we, you know, not just in the league. Obviously, we've had them in in cup games as well. But it, it's tough. We we only had a squad of twenty one um, earlier on in the season. We've lost players. Players have gone back. We've injuries. It's very unsettling. And then one of the biggest things for me, I am not, I am not a settled midfield all season. That doesn't help the defenders. It doesn't help the strikers because they don't know. They're trying to time their runs off different players and and things like that. There's a load of a load of different reasons, but 
you know, like I said, when we've got our strongest 11 out, strongest 14, 15 players, then they can match anybody in League Two, League One, Championship, and Premier League teams that they've shown. Just one on a personal level to you as well. When you not just see your side out against another Premier League opposition, but given everything you've seen the club through as a, as a local guy yourself, to be able to go toe to toe on your own terms, something you've earned, this isn't just a sort of fortunate way things have fallen, you've earned yourself this, this stage. What will that mean to you on a personal level? It means everything to me. Uh, you know, I'm not going to sit here and just say it doesn't mean nothing to me. It's, it's huge. I'm an ambitious uh, young manager. I want to be testing myself against the Pep Guardiola's, the Tony Pulis's, the um, Mauricio Pochettino's of, of the world on a more regular basis. I'm, I'm not, I've never hidden the fact that I'm ambitious. It's, um, it's huge. Now I'm able to do it against Pep Guardiola, Manchester City with Newport County AFC is, um, it, look, it, I can't explain what it, what it feels like or, or what it means because It'll be hard to put into words, but it's, it's a massive, massive proud uh, occasion for me and for my family and for the whole football club. Joe, how do you balance that that opportunity to play against Premier League idols, the kind of people, I guess, the fans that you, you, you look up to and aspire to, who are obviously your opposition and, and you're there on a, on a level playing field? How do you how do you sort of balance that that approach on a big stage? Um, it's it's Okay, for me, you know, it's obviously you've got to prepare for for the game as you would any other game because you've got to go about your job the same way. Um, you know, try and repeat the things that have, have brought us success in previous big occasions playing against other big teams. But in terms of you know getting the balance of trying to enjoy, um, you know, these players coming to to Rodney Parade and and facing up against them as well, you've got to try and you know. Let the game sink in as well and take in the occasion, but um, it's something we've proven we can manage before, and I'm sure you know we can do ourselves proud again Saturday. Yeah, I think it's the same. I think you know the preparation. I don't think you can um, you can do anything different. I think you know personally, I'm not going to do anything different just because it's Man City. You know, if people think if you change what you eat for the, for a day just because you got Man City, you know everything's going to change. You know, um, nothing like that, but. You know, we watch these guys on a Saturday and Sunday, and you know, in the Champions League, and obviously fortunate enough now to go up against them. So we just got to enjoy the game, but you know, pay them respect, but not too much, and um, just go out there with real belief that we can cause a massive upset. Mike, can I just ask? Um, there's an increasing cynicism at times in football, but a story like this, well deserved, but also brings an awful lot of joy. And I just wonder whether you've had messages or responses from other managers. Neil Warner, people like that about the sort of the joy of what you're bringing in terms of the world of football. I have. Um, I've had a lot of messages from from managers. Just being on the phone to Justin Edinburgh, funny enough, who was my old manager. Well, all our old managers, funny enough, as we sat here. Neil Warnock has, has messaged. There's been there's been lots. There's been so many um, good luck messages, um, good achievement messages, and that goes a long way because it shows. Shows managers have respect. You know, Ken McKenna, who's at Morecambe, we're, and, and Jim Bentley, we're, we're rivals, but they're two people who, who do things correctly. They're probably my close friends uh, as well. Um, because it's a respect thing. We're, we're rivals twice a season. Any other time, we'll, we'll try and help each other out because you know, that's where we're at. We, you know, we're, we're small clubs. And we need all the help we can get, and um, you know it's good when you can lean on 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 different managers. You know, Ian Holloway rang me the other day. Who I thought was fantastic. He's he's somebody I know done an excellent job at Blackpool. Now I know a few of the players because I was I've just missed him. Funny enough, but they speak so highly of him. The way you know the way he did things, the way he got them all together, and you know for for him to ring as well just shows how how wide this has gone. Because I didn't know Ian before that. And um, I think it's I think it's a, a touch of class, really. And do you feel that you're sort of almost at, at the vanguard? You're flying the flag for what is all that's good in football. You know, the, the sort of I know it's the romanticism of the cut, cut, but also you know what you guys have proved that you can do by hard work and sheer grit and determination. Yeah, 
it, it is. It's um, look, it's the highest ranked team against the lowest ranked team in the FA Cup, and that probably couldn't be, you know, any truer in in all aspects. You know, you've got you've got every nationality. I think you know under the sun on um, up in Manchester City, and I'm stuck with. I'm stuck with uh, Robbie and Joe. Um, you know, we've got to, we, 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 we've had to we've had to put a couple of um, put a couple of the Irish boys in there as well to get that uh, a little bit of a different feeling. But look, it's we're a, we're a solid unit. We're we're together, um, and they're a great group. They they all get on so well, even though they text each other instead of talking to each other these days, the way society is. But they um, they're a fantastic group and they're a joy to work with. I know you're very much your own man, but having had these messages from other managers and whatever, have you have you taken time out over the last couple of weeks or, or the last weeks really to sort of chat and look to pick up advice, or would you rather not have other people giving input and just think about what you feel needs to be done against Man City? I always try and speak to to different managers. Um, like I said, I want to keep improving. I I want to keep learning. Um, and it's not just about these occasions. It's about you know away form in the league, for example. It's about you know pre-season planning and things. Everything, everything I you know you want to learn on um, how to deal with the board, how not to deal with the board. Um, those kind of things come in. How to deal with a a rogue player. You know, look, I'm I was fairly in, inexperienced over over 110 games now. And believe me, it feels like about 610 games. I'm catching Lenny up because it must be, uh, I must be on a, the opposite to a leap year. <laughs> and just finally from me, your message to the fans. I mean, you know, they, they, can, you know, they can be a 12th man on the pitch on Saturday, can't they? Particularly in that cauldron that's Rodney Parade. Enjoy the occasion. Just enjoy the occasion. Do Newport Pride because although we've been very, very blessed the last two seasons in the FA Cup, it was a long time before we got to the third round uh, before that. And uh, these won't come around every year, so you've got to you've got to savour the occasion, and you've got to enjoy it. You've got to make sure you behave, <laughs> make sure you behave. But you know, these are memories that will last with them forever. So enjoy it. Well, you all enjoy it, and very best of luck. To Thank you. you. Have you got any um, uh, tumble dryers going up in flames or anything this time around? It's all been smooth behind the scenes. <laughs> um, no, it's uh, there's no tumble dryers because they still haven't been done. So no. <laughs> Contracts and penalties. Had a few tron haven't we? Yeah. Um, we do it now and then. Probably do it again today. But uh, yeah, let's hope let's hope we we beat them in ninety minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going for penalties. We're going all, we're going all guns blazing. <laughs> he who dares wins, Rodney, as they say. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you guys. Thanks, guys. Uh, brilliant. Thank you. Very much. My phone.